What's up, beautiful people? I'm Nathaniel Pearl. And I'm Sam Sheva. And welcome to Curious Chimps Podcast, a show where we explore the infinite complexities of the human experience. We do not endorse anything illegal. So please, consult the doctors, do your research, and for the love of all that is holy, be safe. All right, let's talk about drugs. Curious, curious, curious chimps. Oh, dude. Don't even get me started. Yeah. Fucking Full House. America's Funniest Home Videos. I was born in 80s, bro. I grew up with that motherfucker. But he was on America's Funniest Home Videos? He was the first. Well, I mean, maybe there was an older version that I don't know about, yeah. but he was the host? host for a long time. I, I just knew the other guy. With the. I don't, even, I, just, I don't even know his name. For me, I swear to God, the other guy in my mind's eye, I thought it was uh, the guy from House, Dr. House. Okay, yeah, there's like a, there's a build, there's a resemblance there. It was the first thing I thought of, but I know it's not him. Yeah, Hugh Laurie is the guy from House. He's actually British. Okay. And he's a funny guy. He used to have like a comedy show with Stephen Fry. And it's true. Funny. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck is his name? He just looks like a, he's like a future version of Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> That's he good. Just, he just looks like an older Ryan Seacrest. That's good. And, Good, good way to put it. But he has a deeper voice. Yeah. What the fuck was that guy's name? Okay, it doesn't matter. Anyway, yeah, yeah, man, Jimmy, back. Jimmy, pull it up. Uh, yeah, Lily. <laughs> Lily, pull it up. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> She's just lying down. Rest in peace, Bob Saget, man. Wow. We have to, you know what I love is people online, like in comments and stuff, they're just being such dicks and they're being so like stupid and funny. And I'm like, I love when a comedian dies. Yeah. Cause like, I just, I, like I have that like, 2020 like oh you know but then i just go like oh yeah like bob saget would have loved that <laughs> and it's just like it's like a it's cathartic it's like oh fuck it you know it's funny you say that i forgot which comedian was saying i forgot which story it was actually but i think it's um andrew schultz schultz yeah i think yeah. he was talking about like his friend's funeral or something and then like the comedian just went up, like everyone's fucking sobbing. And he's like, oh, yeah. and then what did he say? He's like, because uh, I think he killed himself, the the comedian that killed himself. And then the, the, the comic went up, like he wanted to say a speech. And he's like, fuck, I'm looking around at all of you and I would kill myself too. <laughs> Something like so dark, <laughs> but like Jeez. his friend would have loved it, you know? But it was just like wrong setting, wrong place to say it. But that's like the comedians, that's how they go. I think if you're like 10 or more years into being a comic, you don't care if you don't get a laugh. Yeah. You're like, I'm doing this for me, <laughs> and I'm doing this for the guy in the casket. <laughs> yeah. And there was this, uh, damn, there was this, there was this movie on Netflix with uh, Will Forte, and uh, okay, screw their names, but like, I think the movie was called like a, a, a few something, a stupid and futile gesture or something. It's like one of those na names that is like 20 words, but it's the guys who started. Uh, Mad Magazine okay. and, and National Lampoon or something, or Lamp I don't know if it's the same thing. No, I don't know if it's Mad Magazine. But they, you know, they, they go into how they made the magazine, like from when they started, from when they were in maybe college, and they just like dropped out and made this magazine, and then they, they go into making movies, and they're like huge movies, uh, because it's like Animal House and like all these fucking, mm -hmm. and like, uh, what's the, what's the golf one? Jordan Addison? <clears throat> no, 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 this is way before. This okay. is, um, Holy crap, I can't remember the golf movie. <laughs> Ever, anyone who's listening now is just gonna be like, what the fuck is wrong? I have no idea what it is. Uh, Rodney Dangerfield was in it. Bill Murray was in it. Oh, wow. Um, the, oh. the guy from Community was in it. I need more coffee. It's like my brain's not working. Anyway, so. Well, so it's a great movie, yeah. but at the end, I mean, spoiler, you know, because I, I mean, it's, a, it's kind of like a movie about real life, but the guy dies. Hmm. And. They, the way they set up the funeral scene is like him like being there like a ghost sort of and mm. being like why is everyone sad like I lived for comedy like come on you yeah. know and one of like his like best friend in ever you know is like is like almost like can hear him you know and then he's they, he like throws a, a like a, 
piece of food at somebody and it's like fucking Jim Belushi or something, or John Belushi, I guess. Wait, no. John was the father, yeah. Okay. And uh, so he goes like, food fight, like in that animal house, and like they just start throwing food at each other, and it's That's like, pretty cool. it's like this is what a funeral should be. Like everyone should just get hammered and be happy that they had like time. I mean, there's a place and time to be sad also, but like, especially a comedian, it's yeah. like you're almost insulting the memory of the person. Like yeah. they did, their lives were committed to turning that frown upside down. And it doesn't change <clears throat> because they're dead. Like it's, it's their essence is that, you know? It's like especially then. Yeah, like that's because like the last bit. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's okay. The last bit is that I can't make a joke. You gotta make the joke for me. You're gonna be uncomfortable. And I'm sure today. like they talk about it like amongst each other, like just like cracking jokes about like the, when you die, what I'm gonna say kind of thing. Or like who's gonna do it? Like yeah. who's gonna have the balls to be like like in front of your dying mother? And, like you know, like in front of your fucking like your relatives from like the old country and shit just say <laughs> something right. well that's why like that bit was so so ballsy but so funny it's like i look around at this crowd and i'd kill myself too like it's just so fucking like it's, just, <laughs> it's like oh too soon <laughs> but hilarious. Life's not cold yet but bro. hilarious you know like the guys probably would have laughed so hard if he was around it's how would you want to go sadly how would i want to die yeah That's a tough one. It is a fucking tough one. You know what? I've I've thought about this a few times, and I have a few like funny answers, hmm. like uh, like like kill yourself by jumping off a like I don't know why it's kill yourself. Like, okay. Like you can like how else are you gonna control how you die? You know, like this is just a yeah. hypothetical, so I don't have to be committing suicide. Yeah. But it's like you jump like you you jump off a building with a with like a vest of grenades, so that anyone like the people watching at the bottom just get like showered with your fucking <laughs> remains. It's so gross and dark. That's pretty. Like, uh, that's well yeah. thought out, Sammy. This is, I don't think that's mine actually. My friend uh, Andrew might have thought of that. Is that how you want to go out? Honestly, if I chose how to die, I think it would be like something a little bit painful, but like my brain is intact. Like getting stabbed or shot well, in the stomach or something. Are you out of your mind? I don't know why, because I've seen so many movies where they're like, ah, ah, tell my mom I love her, and I just want to go through like the DMT, like what the fuck is happening. And then just find peace in that moment, like a samurai, you know, just be like, all right, like, but that's not, it's not realistic. Like, well, I, I, mean, I just don't want to die in a fire. I just feel I'm like with you on that, that would suck. I'm with you on that. That would suck oh, the most. Just <laughs> like, burning a lot. You know, my biggest thing about that kind of death is your final, you have to take that final inhale in order to die. Because, you know, you have to. Or like drowning, same thing. Yeah, but that inhale of that hot air. I can't imagine that kind of pain. Like you ever go close to like a campfire and it's like, like it suffocates you? Yeah, like a big hit of smoke and you yeah. like almost pass out. Or like, or like that is my biggest fear of it. I'm just, I imagine it's such a painful inhale. I remember there was a Schwarzenegger movie once where the guy was describing how he would die if he stuck, if he stayed like, like he was like trapped in a cell and he's like, I'm gonna escape, but like I'm gonna burn this place down. I don't remember the movie at all, okay? The guy's like a fireman and he's saying um, like, before before you even suffocate from the smoke, your socks will burst into flames because it's gonna be so hot around you. And you're just like, your your skin is gonna Ugh. melt while you're conscious. And I'm just like, I know this is just a movie, but like, that fucked me up, man. I, maybe I was just too young or something. And I was like, ah, uh, no, that's, no, that's, no. That's a gruesome death. Well, that's how they used to torture people. And not torture, that's how they would execute people. They put them in the bowl, the like brass bowl or whatever. Oh, just cook them alive and shit. Yeah, or so an oil one. What was the oil one? They would, they would just dunk you in hot oil. Oh, that's fucked up, bro. You'd be like a like a jerky, like a human fried. Jeez, I don't want to think about it. The things people did to each other. Oh, did. Oh. Well, I mean, yeah. There's some stuff that's probably off the table now. Thank God. Yeah. But like, we're still we have a long ways to go as humans. But like, fuck, man. In all honesty, I think anyone would answer that question like, I want to die very old in my sleep after having a bunch of grandkids. I don't know if that's true. But like, what if, if someone just like a super big party animal might want to just die at like a fucking coked out party? That to me, that's really sad because I feel like dying is like the craziest drug you're ever gonna take. Mm. And there's really important times in your life where I think the best psychological advice would be like, you should be sober. Like it's gonna hurt, but it's gonna hurt more later to realize that you didn't like feel this, that you weren't present. How would it hurt later? Well, the death one doesn't make sense, but that's why I said that I want to be like lucid. I want to be like in some kind of pain and understand that I'm going to die, but then kind of go through this like cathartic 
like, okay, this is my time. Mm. Like I have time to think about it. People that die in their sleep, they're like, I'm gonna go to the restaurant tomorrow, and then they just pfft, they don't wake up, okay. you know. <laughs> yeah. And then their their family just has to like empty their room and their garage and shit. Like, but if you think about human history, that's probably the most peaceful way to die. That's it. It's like there's a there's I have this I have this conflict between wanting to th just die comfortably and, and have this momentary peace or maybe even this ignorance mm. and like a kind of a legacy thing like was that you who asked me about Bob Saget no well what about it you oh, said, I, oh yeah, yeah I did you yeah. said would you like you think he would trade all of his fame and fortune for an extra day for like just one more day like with his family or something or, or I don't know maybe doing coke with hookers whatever he was yeah. into but uh, I mean that's that that cooked my noodle man mm. like do we like would you like what would motivate you as a person would you give up would you just want one more day just to be alive and to maybe be like imagine like i said like be with your kids mm. but then it's like would you sacrifice the money you made and then that would fuck your kids because you're not famous anymore like now i'm thinking of like the genie rules of this hypothetical well, yeah, because magical situation. if you came back and you've given up all your fame and everything it would just be a completely different reality Right? Yeah, but you're gonna die. Like that fixes itself. Yeah, but what I'm saying is like your whole memory base is completely wiped out. Like your whole life is not that famous life, so your kids are not reaping the benefits. So it's like you're kind of in a sense tapping into an alternate universe. Exactly. That's why it's a weird hypothetical. Yeah. So maybe the fame thing. Uh, but the point, I guess, like the the heart of the question is like thinking about what would you give up? Mm -hmm. What is what is one more day worth to you? And maybe he had such an extravagant life that he'd be like, you know what, I'd rather keep my legacy. Mm -hmm. Like, we all gotta die sometime. And one more day, like, he died at 65. Yeah. Like, one day is not enough. Like, that was, that's, by today's standards, that's kind of young. Yeah. You know, it's, it's old enough to be like, oh, dang, that sucks. You know, like, you're not super surprised. But, like, my mom is 70. My dad's, like, pushing 80. Mm. And these guys, these people are in, in pretty good health. Yeah. To, for them to die tomorrow, I'd be shocked and, and horrified. I mean, no, it's my family as well. Of course, I would take it hard even if they're yeah. 99. But, um, yeah, man, it's, it's, I think, like, that's a, weir that's a weird question. It's definitely a weird question. Because there's no, it's, I think it's like, in the moment, you're just going to make an emotional decision. And it's like, if he was in some, that's why I think I said that to you, right? It's like, if he's, like, feeling good, maybe feeling comfortable, mm. he might be like, you know what, I'll take the death. You know, like, let's just go, let's just do it. I had a good life. I die in a hotel room like a real fucking comedian. Let's go. But really? if he's, like, in pain, and he's, like, uh -huh. like in fear, yeah. and he's, like, I just want to see my kids again. Like, in that moment, like, you're flooded with fear, and then, like, you're flooded with love. You're, like, oh, I just want to see my kids again. I just want to see my wife again, or whatever yeah. the hell. I don't know. I guess if you approach them, it's, a, it's like, another thing. It's, like, uh, well, I guess if you approach them, like, a year in advance and say, on this date, you'll die, we could extend it one year, uh, one day. <laughs> like I guess that yeah, like ten years ago. <laughs> yeah. Would you want one more day? It's like that relativeness. That's an interesting one. one Would more you day. want that extra day? No, of course. I, like that's that's how the, we, with our minds yeah. work like that. It's but like, in the moment you would. Now. It's so weird. But then you know how when you're gonna die, and then those next ten years are gonna be full of like, maybe I don't well, know. Maybe some fucking people might get super depressed for like the. You know what's funny is I don't think it would change much for me. Hmm. I think like this is this ADD shit that I get into where it's like. I'm already thinking that way, and it's already affecting me as much as it will. Well, Obviously, things are shocking and, and can change a person. Yeah. It doesn't matter who, what walk of life, you know, but... Like, well, but would that be comforting in a sense that you know your end date? No. Why? Let's say you know, like, because for me, hmm. uh, any kind of uh, future point becomes all I think about. Even if you tell me there's going to be a guy who's bringing a package today, and it might like interrupt the podcast, it would fuck with my podcast. Okay, but if I told you a guy is bringing a package in 60 years. It's, I'm gonna have the shittiest 60 years of my life. <laughs> I don't know, because man. Because it's a package of my of me dying. It's a, it's a fucking sight, bro. So you're more comfortable in the unknown than knowing. Yeah. Okay. I know it could be tomorrow or in fucking 80 years. Well, what a practice that might be if you actually knew, like to come to terms with that knowing. It's weird though because it's it's a duality. It's like the to live healthily, you could kind of reconcile. I mean, it depends on the individual, but I think for okay for me personally, I think I have to kind of reconcile where it's like I want to act like I'm gonna live forever. Mm. I want to take the pressure off because that works better for me. But I also want to 
in some situations really have like a respect for the fact that I could die like today. Mm. I could just be like looking at my phone like a moron and getting hit by a bus. Yeah. Like there has to be that way of treating other people and knowing what's important in that context that things are fleeting, that everything is well, it's like the uh, intro, the the uh, law of impermanence, you know. I think yeah, but there's it, for me there's like I think for everybody it's just a natural fear and like that speed bump of applying that to yourself, like to your life, you know. Like it's it's um it's one thing when it's like your and maybe it is the same thing, you know, mm-hmm. like with your your anger, your happiness, like everything becomes contextualized and like none of this is permanent. Yeah, the the, the end thought is oh yeah I'm gonna not be permanent at some point I'm gonna poof one day it's a really interesting thought thought uh, experiment like if you had the ending and I guess it would depend on person on on different type of people how they would respond to that and some people might prefer that I don't know it's a good question like um what's that movie called in time with Justin Timberlake Okay. And Olivia Wilde, and that girl that has like a baby face. Did I ever remember her name? No. She was in Mean Girls. She was like the dumb one. She was like grabbing her boob to know that it was raining. Oh, I know what you're talking about. She was in a few comedies. Yeah, she was in like the second Ted, I think. Yeah, and Scream, I think too. No. Was she? Was she not? Not Scream. Sorry. Uh, um, the the spoof version of it, like uh, I forgot what it's called. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh. Scary movie. Scary movie, yeah. Yeah, it's just something movie all the time. <laughs> um, the hell are we talking about? I just lost the the, well, the the movie with her and Justin Timberlake. Time or something? In Time, yeah. In Time. Uh, is it? Or Just In Time? That'd be funny if it's Justin Timberlake. Just I think it's just called time. In Time. But they were all genetically modified to live, to stop aging at 25. So, so this guy's mom was Olivia Wilde, mm-hmm. who was like younger and hotter than Justin Timberlake. Well, I mean, looking at the time. Yeah. Well, that, that technology is going to happen. But I, I mean, even, no, but like, okay, hold on. Okay, maybe. But let's not go there. My okay. point is that they have a fucking, like, a digital readout yeah. embedded in their skin. And they can see how much time they have. Mm. And time literally becomes money, literally becomes currency. So all these poor people, like, it's a good movie if you haven't seen it. I honestly don't want to ruin it for you, but I'll tell you two things that are kind of like early in the movie. One is like these people are poor and that means that they literally don't have time. So this girl has to work to live. When the clock goes zero, your body shuts down and you die instantly. Mm-hmm. Like there's like in, in a second. So there's people Jeez. there's people like running home, like like the, her and her like uh, and her son, so Justin Timberlake and Olivia Wilde's character, they're they're both working jobs and then they have to meet each other to shake hands and like trade time mm-hmm. so that whoever has like less time like gets the time back Whoa. so that they don't die. And then like, 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 you know, I, I, I don't want to ruin anything, but yeah. like, if you miss you a bus, bro, like you're, you're shitting your pants because you might literally die. And then the guy meets a dude who's like on a bridge who wants to kill himself and he's got like hundreds of years. So he's literally like, he's literally going to like time. live. I know, but he's rich, but like, he's like immortal. Yeah. Like it's such a crazy movie. I gotta check it out. That sounds pretty cool. It's a fucking good movie. And I, it made me realize Timberlake is a crazy good actor. Mm. It's weird when these people are just like musicians and they just like break into acting and it didn't work for a lot of them. Mm. But like, I'm gonna check it out. Timberlake like, crushed it. But there was like a, I think it was like a Korean, like short video on YouTube, and it was like this woman. I think she was able to see people's time, how much time they have left. It's like a, it's like a little number, like a clock over each head. That's and she was death note. It was kind of like that, that I forgot the premise of it, but it was really interesting. Like she was helping this guy with a heart attack, and then it just showed his number to zero. And then she looked up at like a grieving wife or something, and it showed like 17 days left. And it was just like really intense. Yikes. Yeah. It'd be cool if you saw it change. Like but she had like 20 years left, but yeah. then because the husband died, she had 17 years left. Mm. Or 17 days left. Yeah. I don't know. I, if you could find that, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I'll check it after. But. Um, I don't know. I think would that change the quality of life if you knew? It might. It might be part of living is not knowing the next step. You know that the thrill of the unknown. Like if you knew other people's death, or if you knew in general time. just knew like your time's up. Yeah. Like can this chick look in the mirror and just see like her numbers or something? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I keep thinking of the rules, but like I, the, again, the heart of the question, I don't know, man. It's it's like a thought experiment. I think we would just go quiet for a while. It's, it'd be weird for a podcast. But like, I guess I could think out loud. Like, imagine a society no, like, we all know when we're gonna die. Yeah. Like, what would change? Would there be the same amount of art? Would there be the same kind of? Uh, I don't know. I don't. It might be like exactly the same, except more anxiety leading up to, or depending on the personality type, more innovation more Would people being nicer to each other oh for sure well like, maybe not maybe it would become normalized but is it in your face all the time like is everyone just have their number floating around because then for sure people would be nicer imagine some guy cuts you off and he's got like 10 days left and you're like holy shit. go ahead buddy <laughs> or imagine a guy walks up to you and you know you're gonna die like you know today's the day you're gonna die and then you're just like you're having this, the worst day of your life yeah or maybe the, maybe like a week before you hit like a catharsis, you know? Like it's I don't know. So true. I but feel like there'd be so many like rituals. A couple gives birth to a baby and the baby dies like seven days. Like like oh, there would be yeah. a lot of pain too. Oh, that'd be crushing. Oh, that would be that would fuck up reality. But you could always be. You know what? You know what's funny is that wouldn't take away from the surprise, because some there's always going to be times when you just didn't notice or you didn't understand or you didn't know the person yet. Mm. Like, if you have loved ones and you got to see the number and you understand, like, it would be, it would be like, it would, again, like, it'd be normalized, but there would still be that surprise of life. Like you said, like, a baby is born and then it's like they have three days or something. You're like, oh my God. Like, that shock is as bad as a, a stillbirth. It's like, yeah. you're just like, fuck. What the fuck, man? Yeah. We were expecting this, we got that. And it's in such an emotionally charged it's, thing. Yeah, I think there's so many examples we can pull, but like, if you had a baby and the baby had 16 years, like, how incredible would those 16 years be as a parent raising this child? You know, like, it would change, dude, it would change all of it, man. Like, now the more you, the more you, it really would uh, explore the hypothetical. Imagine you bump into someone and it just says, like, infinity. It's fucking fuck? Jesus. <laughs> yeah, you're like, who are you, bro? He's like, I don't know, bro. Everyone's telling me. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I think I'm fucking Jesus. Or like, maybe, you know what? It's like Elon Musk. He's like, I'm just going to, I want to plug into that computer. Like, I want to be the first one. Well, how many uh, people would fucking, like some rich ass CEOs would try to invest in technology to hijack it and hack it? Or hide it. Imagine you could wear like a hat. Imagine like, a, like a, instead of Amazon, Bezos yeah. just invented a hat and you could like hide your fucking... <laughs> You know, like you, like you, it like blurs what, it. Or what something. would be the benefit of hiding it? The, the lie, bro. The, the the whole point of the hypothetical is like we would live differently because we, it's in our face. Mm. The death is just like, it's like you you can't escape the reminder. And all of life seems to be this, this like, human like universal trauma that we're just trying to forget that we're finite. And that's the uh, the fucking main aversion that like the buddhists are trying to warn us about that's that's causing all the problems in our fucking society 100 percent is you know that that's not coming to terms with your mortality yeah and there's so much downstream problems with that you know that whole idea of like we're we're borrowing the planet from our next generation like we don't have that respect anymore wow and we have i mean and we forgot it it's kind of it's, it's like an innocent ignorance sort of but like not anymore like mm -hmm. hopefully people are doing better now but anyway that's not the point like I think the benefit would be that people just want it, and it, if it's if it's normalized, it's like it's like when people are like, oh yeah, I watch like stepsister porn or something, and it's like, oh thank God, me too. Like like mm -hmm. people will just jump on it, like, oh okay, that's normal, that's that's accepted. Let's or and then other people will try it mm -hmm. because they're curious. So it just opens the door, and then boom, man, you're making money, you're making bank. <laughs> You're the fucking 400 billion whatever going into space because you're but, selling the hats. But you're just hiding it. Like people would still, once you un unravel the knowledge or un reveal the knowledge, like it, you're just willingly being ignorant at that point. But that's that's all of society. Buying stuff to distract yourself, never being hungry. Yeah, but the eating. premise is, is still from an unknown. It's not from knowing and then... Like people are genuinely, I guess. Oh, okay, because it's specific data. Yeah. It's not just you're gonna die. Yeah. It's, which is which it's is very specific. Yeah. That's a. It's there's less of that existence, less of that uh, blurriness. You're right. It's like a clock. It's like yeah. you literally. It's have, just it's fact. It's literally objective truth. I think that'd be a cool anime, bro. Like I'd watch sick. that. <laughs> but I think that's that comes down to the meditations that the samurais would do, where they would visualize death daily. I think the plural of samurai is samurai. 
But it's a Japanese word. Samurai. I'm just being a dick. I'm sorry. What did I say? Samurais? Yeah. Samurai. Samur. Samur. Samurai. Samurais. Samurai words. But the they would meditate daily on ways to die in like the most horrific ways. Oh yeah, I said I would. I said I would lend you the Hanagure. What's this? Translation? No, it's well, yeah, it's like a, the they call it the Samurai Bible. Okay. This guy took like forty years to like write like one anecdote at a time, mm -hmm. and it's like this is how samurai live. This is the this is what we are. And sometimes it makes no sense. I love it. It makes no sense. He's like he like it's it's just three lines or something. And it's like all it says is like the sentence just starts and he says the smell of clovers when you open an old box you found in the attic. You know, and then it's the, it just the thought just ends and you're like, okay, next. <laughs> like I don't get it. But then you read one where it's like meditate daily on wolves eating you and arrows ripping you apart we're all gonna die you should be able to finish your last task even if your head is cut off this is the way of the samurai but, and you're like okay i gotta put this book down for like but, three days but with that context it makes more sense the, the smell of the clover when you open the box whatever because it's just a moment of appreciation because i gotta read that book again it's really interesting <laughs> because it's like it's just something you take for granted that he noticed because he's come to terms with his death you gotta hold on you gotta help me like ergonomically here like my neck is killing me like what am i doing wrong uh can i just can i bring this like like this and like look at you sure or just i don't know you look so comfortable and i'm just like doing, doing like <laughs> pilates over here uh yeah well that's what the setup maybe we should do chairs in the future like three love seats like this maybe we could actually point at you and then we can shift the chairs facing each other a bit more what if i just talk to you but i pretend i just talk to the camera no, but I find this setup, so, we are a little bit too, um, so. we are too, um, I guess, parallel. We're not, we're in a perpendicular. I guess it depends what your reference point is. Yeah. Our, our well, bodies like, are parallel. Whoa. Okay, I don't care. I don't no, think but it's, it's just, <laughs> yeah, I think about the love seats. It could be an idea. I like it. Or we could, we'll use that next time. Yeah, I can get a few more of these and just, anyway. You guys tell us what you think. <laughs> yeah, give us some tips, man. My neck hurts. Yeah. But also give us some comments about this death stuff. I would love ideas. I'm I, sure we're sparking ideas. Like, just fill the comments up. Yeah. I generally, I think, and this will be my last exclamation mark on this whole idea, is that I think it would be a better world, a more humble, more giving, more loving world. My. It's because the biggest thing that. The biggest problem that we're having as collective, and you're seeing it now, is the threat of our mortality, of, the, of our death. And now that when people realize that they can die, they start acting very irrational a lot of times. Because it's it's like a... It's a shock. When you, yeah, when we're you, still in like a childhood version, like we haven't handled it. When most people think about their death when they get a, a, a bad test at the doctor or something, where it was like a shock after X amount of years. Or someone dies. Yeah. From their and then they go about Absolutely. their day and forget again. But having that reminder daily, I think, would make a more peaceful, loving world because everyone knows everyone's time and everyone knows that their time. You know? do, you, do you hear that? Yeah. It's so weird. I wonder if it's in the recording. I just suddenly got like a whizz. I personally, I really, I, I agree with you because it's made me a better person. Mm. So I know that like I was more flippant about things and what made you a better person? Understanding that I'm gonna die, that everyone that I talk to is gonna die. Mm. Every single thing is gonna end that I know, that I think I know. The dog's gonna die, you're gonna die, my mom and dad are gonna die, my brother's gonna die. I'm the youngest in my family. Yeah. I, I came to the fact that I came to the realization that if everything goes perfectly, I'm gonna watch everyone I love die first, which is the, the good thing. Like, I'm like, fuck, that sucks, but I would hate to die before my parents. Mm. I think... Like, that's a w that's weird to think that yeah. that's a gift. Yeah. To, 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 to have to go through the, the loss, but for that to be the order of things. Literally, the order. Like, they're older than me. I would have a longer life. I still want a quality of life, but, like, man, like, you gotta you need some time to figure shit out. Yeah, yeah. Did I just go quiet? And yeah, I don't know what's going on with the audio levels. It went up and down. Dude, we need a new mixer. My computer's yeah. broken. <laughs> I still hear myself though. That, yeah, that, you're that, good. That, you're that, good. That, that, just you, you, you hyped up for a few seconds.
So yeah, man, I, I have to agree, but I also have a bit of cynicism in me when it comes to humans. And I mean, it's not cynicism, but like, I think that it would make life better in some ways and worse in some ways. I think it would balance out. I think something would just like, like it would become the, the it would be, it's like the fish and water thing, you know, it would just be our lives, it would be normal. That's why I like the idea of making like a TV show out of it. It's like seeing the rules. Like yeah, seeing but it play normal. Out. Is you you're having a bias reference point because you're visualizing this world in the normal like that kind of normal we can't even imagine. It's fun to think about. Like honestly, what would change? Like maybe, like how would it be used to free you, and how would it be used to control you? That's what I want to see because that's mainly what things boil down to when it comes to like like it might be large like, human content. It might be like groups, group. Uh, you know, like people have like uh, community groups or support groups it'd be like uh, anyone who's in the next five years come to the support group yeah you know or maybe there'd even be like a, like it'd be like more of a communist society because it'd be like oh you only have like 10 days left to live you can oh, be a that's the dark side of 10 it. days or like a power structure would take those 10 day people and make them work vigorously no nah, they would they, they'd be like fuck you i'm not gonna work that's like, right like, okay, we're gonna torture you or something. That's true. I mean, that's, maybe. But that's interesting because then they'll be like, yeah, fuck you. I'm 10 days and kill me now. It doesn't change anything. But, like, does that mean that we evolved that way too? I have no idea. I have no idea where I was going with this initially. I <laughs> love it. I love thinking about it. Like, um, imagine imagine people getting along. Imagine walking the street and seeing someone has the same death day as you and being like, ah, bro, <laughs> let's meet back here. It would have, this would have to drop on us out of nowhere for it to have a huge impact. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, that, that's easier to think about, because that would just be so weird, and it'd be, like, cacophonous and, yeah. and chaotic, whereas, like, if we, like, can we see our, can we see animals' death days in, like, trees? If you, like, go into space, can you see, like, the Earth's death day or the Sun's death day? Like, yeah, I would, I would just leave it simpler if it was just people. Yeah, that's why, it needs to be an anime, because, because yeah. no one asks questions with anime. <laughs> yeah. Interesting though. I honestly would fucking love that show. Like, someone please make that. I know. I. I what are the odds? Like, some manga person is watching this. Like, some manga creator, like an artist. Well, there was a show. It's like a slice of life too. It's like a simple, yeah. peaceful show, but everyone just knows what they're gonna know. Like, there's a Netflix show called Hellbound. Did you see it? Hellbound. No. It's a Korean show. It's like six episodes, I think, or eight episodes, one season. Uh, it's really well done. Basically, it's kind of that idea, except what happens is, is randomly you get the. I guess like these demons come to you and they tell you sadly you got uh, three years left and then we're taking you to hell and like every Why hell that's just the, that's the demons were just coming and then right. when it's your time the demons would just met like appear it's like three or four monsters and they would beat you in the most horrifying death like they would destroy you slap and then everyone can see this happen they just like start slamming you and beating the fuck out of you and then you, you end up being like a bloody mess and they steal your soul and then, uh, yeah, when they steal your soul, your body like burns to a crisp and it's just, you disappear. And it was fascinating because like, you see how people form belief systems because randomly these demons would summon someone and say, you have two years, you have 10 days, whatever. So like a religion form saying like, they're taking away the sinners. Like these are the angels that take away the uh -huh. sinners. So then you just see like this giant power structure form and saying like, uh, like, uh, like you have to you have to abide by these rules of life and if you're a sinner like like they can shun you you know you just see everyone starts changing the way they live and worshiping this cult but it's random well I, i'm not going to spoil the whole premise oh but well usually okay so it's good enough that you don't want to spoil it with, well i mean it's only six episodes yeah yeah but that's okay whatever so spoiler alert it's been out for a few months so fuck off <laughs> it ends up that I probably get mad at this hypothetical person that doesn't want us to spoil anything. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Scott, Jeff. But so what happened was is that your dog was gonna puke. What happened was is that it was uh, it was random, and it they realized it was random because a baby was summoned by the demon. Christ Almighty! Yeah, and it said like this baby has like uh, two weeks, and the mom had it on video, and then you, they, she showed it to the fucking cult leader. And then they tried to kill her and like whatever. Oh, to hide it. Yeah, because that would power, implode yeah. the fucking power structure that they built. It's just really a good show. Of everything. It's a really good show. And it's kind of like the idea of what we're talking about, but different. Because it's random, it's not everyone at once. Yeah. But, but it's still, it's just fun to explore 
like I think that's why people really got into comic books. You know, like it was it was like an exploration of hypothetical psychology, mm. like theoretical psychology. It's like, what if you were omnipotent? What if you were like like a dude, but you had godly powers? Yeah. And then you think about like the altruism or the or the the, the malevolence that that is created. Like people rationalize uh, good or someone like superman is such a good example because he i mean he like he's like he thinks he in his mind he's like from earth like he's human mm -hmm. he looks human he was raised by humans there's no real question that he's like oh it's like you're an alien technically but it's like more like puberty it's like he has a relatively normal childhood and then he can like jump super high and, and crush things with his fucking pinky but he's like oh shit like i have to take care of like he becomes like 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 um it's not inferiority comp like he's he knows he's superior but he's like i need to help these people because they can't lift a fucking train with their dick or whatever you know like yeah, yeah. whereas you could have been like and people have theorized this or there's alternate comic books where he's evil or or whatever you know where it's like i need to control these people because they're stupid mm. like i have a crazy physical and mental ability and i'm just going to oppress the evil as much as i can but people like both sides are naive, I find. I mean, I don't want to get into the crazy, complex, bullshit psychology of, of potentially a Superman, but like you know, you're you're both of them d require naive faith because you're like, oh, like I'm just gonna ignore this side of humanity, mm. but I can do that because I'm Superman. Yeah. You know, but it's like Batman. Also, it's like, what if you, what if you used fear as fuel and as a, a weapon thing mm. instead of being run by it. Or like, I don't know, like the Flash. Like yeah. imagine having a, a, a one hour conversation and it felt like a month to you. Like imagine the, the <laughs> fucking life you live. Like it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting. And it stretch, it wrinkles your brain. Like it stretches your, your way of seeing things. And it, it also kind of pushes like what's possible here and now, mm -hmm. you know? Like you think, um, I mean, I don't know for sure, but like there's, there's like, I, I was, this is like my go-to example all the time, but like there's blind people who are learning, who have learned how to use echolocation. Yeah, so I, I saw a video that the guy was like clicking with his mouth. And he's riding a bicycle <laughs> and not hitting shit. That's pretty wild. And then he's like, I'll teach you guys how to do this. And it's like, you're repurposing a part of your brain. Yeah. Or, or I mean. No, you're just strengthening a part of it. That's it. Repurpose is not the right word, but it's like you're you're using sound to interpret things, hopefully like visually to a degree. I don't know how real it is as echolocation in the human mind. I don't know if the visual cortex lights up when your fucking ears keep bouncing around, like, but it doesn't matter. But the that's point the is power they, of adap adaptation. It's but like, it, but that, like, it's a superpower. Like, yeah. I wonder if the inspiration is like, what can humans do with? But I think that's deeper. I think it's just an evolutionary response for survival. It's like we need to figure out how we can survive and navigate. So let's let's heighten our next sense. You know, it's like when you like when you when you remove a sense, all the other ones get heightened. Yeah, it's like you reallocate. Like if you eat in the dark, which I've never done, but there was like a restaurant. I, I forgot what it was called, but it's like pitch black in there, and you just eat. I would never do that. Me neither. I have I no interest. What I'm eating. But <laughs> I've had too many bits of shit. Like well, I don't, I don't know. I just, I feel like it would be an unpleasant experience, just eating in the dark. It'd be freaky, man. It'd be like, but, but the whole idea is that it, it heightens your, your taste buds, your, your sense of taste, and smell. So the textures and everything just are heightened. I wonder if that's true. Like I understand, like I can close my eyes to help me hear better, mm. because I'm removing a distraction. Yeah. But if you listen closely and your eyes just kind of like drift upwards. If, if you go back to the that memory of like five seconds ago where you were listening harder you functionally go blind you stop like looking if you're listening harder yeah yeah so like your eyes are still open but like yeah. you just kind of like a friend my friend Cynthia pointed this out like 10 years ago and I never forgot it because it was so astute of her to just honestly and like in a dry sense just be like it's crazy how you kind of like stop seeing when you start listening you know it's like when you look you need to see but like like seeing is just happening yeah. effortlessly but you you stop seeing yeah because your brain goes like okay we're just gonna focus all the we're just gonna allocate all the resources to hearing but that's yeah I mean, that's like if you listen to a song and you get really into it you're just like you're not you hear better well you're definitely more focused on that 
that sense, so it's heightened because it has all your attention. Do you remember the the like the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes movies? Oh yeah, I remember that. I get it. Like he goes down to like the millisecond of calculations. Yeah, well, I mean, that's I think I think like that that is obviously like fluffy movie, yeah. uh, but like it's also practice. I remember when I was doing parkour like that part of my brain that could kind of adrenaline like slow down time mm. was just so flexed all the time that I feel like I, I felt like I could just turn it on whenever I wanted and just be like like fucking matrix style because it was practiced so there's like some reality to that but um my the reason I'm bringing it up was more that like he he was really good at identifying things that he smelled and it's like that's practice mm. that's like memory and association you might not be really good at smelling. Like I, I'm good at smelling something because it's like from far away. I get like a small amount of particles, and I, and my schnoz picks it up. But I, don't, I might not know what it is. Yeah. Whereas he, he'll have to put it up to his nose if he has like a bad sense of smell. But he's like, oh, this is like, this is a dandelion, and mm-hmm. like, oh, this is lavender. Oh, this is frankincense. Like, like you, you know what it is. Like the same way someone has like perfect pitch when they hear a, a certain tone. They yeah. Go, oh, that's an F sharp or whatever, and like. Does that get better? Because you have like that has to get better. I'm sure it would. I'm because sure. you you have to. You're just thinking more. I'm I'm sure it would. You know exactly. And I think it's because your focus would be on what you have. You know, if you went blind tomorrow, all of a sudden you need your ears to be off. Like okay, so here's a great example. Years ago we did a course. Uh, my friend and I we did like a course for uh, anatomy trains. Mm. It was really fascinating. It was actually at the I end can't of the semester. The anatomy yeah. thing? It's, it's a heavy read. It's, I can't. Yeah. It's not, you're not it's meant to actual, read it. Yeah. No, it's, it's, a, it's a practical book. Yeah. But we did a course and it was like a three day weekend and we were uh, we were assessing people's bodies and posture. So one woman stood up and I think I mentioned this story on the podcast way before. But basically, she you would stand in front of the class, you, like, you would just shake your body so you're just not, because you know, if you stand in front of people, you start to try to fix yourself up. So shake your body a little bit, then stand naturally, and maybe even close your eyes and spin and then stand. So she was standing and her whole body was like shifted to the left. She was an older woman, like in her sixties, but like she, her whole body sadly was like, like, like this, if this is forward, she was like this a little bit. I'm exaggerating, but you can notice that her whole body was leading with her left side of her head. And we're all observing her and we're saying, oh yeah, like you know, she has like a spinal rotation she has, like her hips are kind of shifted, you know, uh, her shoulders a little bit higher on the left side and we're all trying to break it down. So what, what we discovered is she's deaf in her right ear. So her body to adapt and evolve to make her the most efficient possible, uh, being turned her body into like a giant ear where it turned her whole posture to lead with the left ear. And that's just how her body adapted. Like, it's super complex if you really think about that. Did you say this story already? I think I meant either on air or off air. I told you this, I think. But how fascinating is that? Her whole body, what? We're missing a fucking uh, hole that hears. We gotta turn the whole body into a new ear. Necessity. Necessity is the mother of invention. You brought a great question. It's like, do we want to correct this? Because. Can you? It's probably not even conscious on her part. Yeah, but like, as a therapist, you would see this and you'd be like trying to fix her hips and trying to fix her her ribs. And like really working on trying to realign the body to the best posture, which there's no such thing as good posture. It's just like what's functional for you. And necessarily, to, is it necessary to change her back or to try to work on that? I'm not sure. It's a good question. I guess if it's causing her pain, like you have to. I mean, it's good to be aware, but then you can make a choice where once you're conscious of it, you're like, oh, okay, like I'm gonna. It's gonna be hard to mitigate this. Yeah. And then do I want to? Is, is a really good question. Yeah, because they, this is her most optimal way of, of reorganizing her body to maximize her hearing. It's like, it made me think. It makes me think of uh, of uh, Mark. Like he's been on the podcast a few times. Yeah. I think. Um, I remember when I was massaging him, I felt like some imbalance. Like the guy's in great shape, mm-hmm. but it's like really like you know when you're touching someone, you, you feel it. And I was like, do you do you try to like counter rotate things that you do often in jujitsu? And he's like, no, I have a good side. And like that's that's not gonna change. Like mm-hmm. I couldn't convince him, and he convinced me because I'm I, I don't know anything about jujitsu. It's like it's like I'm I'm gonna keep this. This is this works for me. Mm-hmm. This is how I'm gonna get my black belt kind of thing. 
and I was like, okay, like, <laughs> if it's not hurting you, yeah. like, what's the problem? But yeah, that's the whole thing. But like, you're, I mean, you're gonna be a little sideways, but like, are we born a little sideways? Like, we our, our organs are not symmetrical. No. We probably have a leg that's longer than the other. Yeah. You know, your There's dick so goes to one side, your fucking one eye. Like, I look sometimes, like, I wonder if it's a hearing thing as well. But, like, I, I, I notice sometimes the level of my glasses. I'm just staring at something, and my, my level is off. And I just go, oh, shit, like, I'm tilting my body. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on there? Yeah. Like, I don't, I'm not sure what the cause is. And then I, I actually, like, try to tilt. And I realize it might be giving me a lazy eye. Mm -hmm. I might be leading with an eye. I might be kind of like forgetting, like, like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of cross-eyed. Yeah. Like my left eye is kind of getting lazy, and it's really, it's funny to close my right eye, and then to look at stuff, and like if I quickly jump from one point to another, my, my left eye is like off. Like the muscle memory is off. Yeah. So it's like I jump to to look at like a corner of something, and I'm like a little lower or a bit like to the right, and I have to kind of adjust. And that, that's how they fix lazy eye, mm. is like, like wear an eye patch on your strong eye for, for a while. And then, so that's fascinating. Oh! So, Sorry. Sorry, yeah. Good Sorry, old, it's a dog part. Good old Louis. But that's fascinating. So to correct it, which would be to use your body's natural, um, natural, I guess, evolution response to, you limit the use of something and then it strengthens the other thing. So covering one eye will just get the other eye stronger because of adaptation and all these things. Yeah. It's fascinating. But it's, I'm always like, I'll, I'll, I'll use this word correctly. I am worried about like, what is the, oh, am I not spiking now? Yeah, I don't get the, the, the mixer, bro. Hello. Anyways, we'll just continue. It doesn't matter. Fuck it. Yeah. Um, You're worried about something. Oh yeah, I always want to know what the cause is. I always want to be like, what is the root? Like, what's really going on? And can I, like, like kind of like you said, like, do I want to fix it? Mm. Or is it something I have to kind of work with? And I don't know, it's like endless question. How did we get here? I'm wondering like what the chain of well, the conversation was. We talked about adaptation from being blind and having heightened senses. And then it went into the, the course about the ear. How did we go from a death clock to... <laughs> That's a good one. I have no idea. Bob Saget, death clock, blind people. <laughs> Adaptation. Yeah. There's like so much in between there. <laughs> that That's I just a, don't know. Just, we're going to have to dissect it after. But that's, that's what it goes, man. There's just a variety of subjects to float around. How would you want to die? Ah. I didn't even reciprocate the question. Motherfucker. I'm sure you thought of it. I'm sure that like, I just assume when people ask me these questions, they have an answer. I, I, I haven't thought of it. That's the funny part. Take your time, bro. How would I die? I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I think. But like, don't be afraid to answer based on how you feel now. That's yeah. my trick. It's just like, oh, you know what? I want to get stabbed and like have a DMT like realization, <laughs> like a natural high. <laughs> well, there's like the. I definitely don't see myself dying on my deathbed at an old age with loved ones around me. I mean, that is a beautiful death, but I don't know. You want to like hit a, a fucking mountain with like a, in a bathing suit at fucking Mach one? Definitely not that. <laughs> like, uh, there's a photo of my 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 Facebook profile photo of me sitting on the ledge in Thailand, like the one my mom yeah, painted. Yeah, Jesus. But I actually get like PTSD thinking back on that, like how close I was to death because. That fucking thing was narrow to get down in, and I was terrified doing it. And just visualizing, because I always walk, look at that picture and I visualize slipping off, and just everyone's just like, oh fuck. Yeah, not And just it. clocking on like 10 different rocks, yeah. and then I'm dead. So. It's like, I'm glad you're alive, and I'm glad you got a cool photo and a cool painting out of it, but not worth it. Definitely not worth it. And I'm like thinking, like, I sat on so many ledges of cliffs, and it was just, it was like, a, not worth it. Like sitting on the ledge, like I didn't get anything out. Like I don't understand people that sit on balconies on the railing on like the thirtieth floor of a building. <laughs> My friend once, like, I, we were like a little smashed. To be fair, I, w I wonder if am I just being picked up on yours? No, it just it, it lowered. It's so strange. Don't worry about it. It's, I can level it after a minute. Fuck it, bro. We might 
might just lose this whole podcast. I don't think. No, it's, it's still recording. I'm just saying, like, I go to the extreme of like, I need you, bro. It's yeah. fucking. But yeah, man. So she, she fell over the rail. And but there was a tree. There's a tree that's like big Jesus. and like right in front of the, the the balcony. So she literally falls and just hits a branch. Just like taps a branch and like we just grab her and like pull her back in. I, I don't remember. It was a long. It was like more than ten years ago. High up. I think she would have got hurt but not died. Yeah. She. We were on the, we were like on second floor or like third floor. Yeah, she probably would have been okay, but it's still probably brutal. Like if she broke something. It's it's how you fall. She yeah. might have broken a wrist or she, yeah. or, a, or a fucking femur or her neck. You know, oh. like or maybe she would have been fine. She might have fucking pancaked and just been like, oh, I think I got a concussion, but yeah. more or less okay. Like I, I don't know, man. You never know. Okay, death. How would I die? Uh, you know what? It would probably be doing something I love. <laughs> It'd probably be in the sauna. <laughs> I, I would I would go in the sauna. You know, I would I would have loved a funny like a uh, like a uh, I'd love to get like choked out in jujitsu and the guy kills me by accident. No. The day before I get my black belt back or something like <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean there is no real noble death, right? It's just the death, but like. Something where people would be like, this fucking idiot. Like, they would kind of laugh at it in a sense, like almost comedic. Like, the sauna, like, so many friends warned me to be careful in there. And you just croak in there one day. <laughs> you just fucking croak in there. And it's just, it's running, and the, your dog is scratching at it. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> horrible. Where I just choke on, like, some raw liver. Like, there's no good way to die. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, something that you, something that you do, like, something that's yours, like a, like a habit that you do, and then you die doing it would be a little bit more like your friends would be like, oh, well, you know, it's something you love. <laughs> Where do I do this like that? I don't have any strong habits or routines or anything. No. There's nothing that's very zen. I would just hope it would be painless. That's like the number one hope. I think for anyone when they die or thinking about them dying, it's just a painless death. Like if you if you yeah. think about it, like most people, except for you, for some weird reason, you want to get stabbed. No, in it's, the belly it's, it's and almost like an anesthetic. Go through septic shock. Yeah, it's like it's almost a distraction to be like the pain is an anesthetic from the fear. You're like bleed out for die. hours. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like you're all white and cold. Yeah, like it, like it, it didn't puncture anything, yeah. but it's just enough to like drain your blood. Oh, so God. you're just lying there like Fuck, this was a bad fucking idea. Or like imagine like imagine it punctures a lung and you're just like. <laughs> Like you can't oh. breathe and you're just you're like oh dude i can't i had a friend he uh and he's in good shape <laughs> he just picked up a fridge and his lung just punctured and just fucking popped a hole in his lung it's okay yeah it was it was like 10 years ago he was a jiu-jitsu guy and he was gone for like six months we're like where the fuck is martin and he comes back he's like, he's like i punctured my lung lifting up a fucking fridge <laughs> explain like just like a, picked How? up the, the fridge and like felt really out of breath or like a sharp pain or something and then apparently just blew a fucking casket hole in his fucking lung wow it's really crazy I, I guess that happens i think there's like a it's a rare occasion but it could happen through maybe overexertion or something is it holding your breath also? Like, I'd love I to know. Like, yeah, we'd have to research like what causes it, but like, they had to do like an emergency surgery on him and everything. Hi, Lily. Yeah, I I think the one kind of death I would avoid is a slow death, like a like a cancer and then like uh, slowly deteriorating. You know. And you got to make the decision of yeah. like, and like eighty percent of the time, I hope 99 percent of the time, I hope people will choose like medicine. Yeah, you know, like the, that jo that Steve Jobs path where you just like try to like eat less meat and like uh, blueberry lose. extract. Exactly, like it's yeah. it's like I know there's a lot of fuckery in the world, but like if you have cancer, like get, get the treatment, people, bro. Yeah, yeah, like you're gonna like. I mean, I would say do all the natural things as a complement to the to the yeah. Treatment. I feel like there's a lot of synergy that could go on. Yeah. Like there was this TED talk that like I'm sure the guy got suicided because it was like this old technology that he was trying to bring back where it was like using resonance to to destroy cells mm -hmm. and he's like you can you can use like octaves to make it stronger and you can tune it to specific types of cells so you can literally like 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 shoot sound at a guy it kills cancer cells and the rest of his body is fine. Someone else told me about this actually. 
Well, it's, it's like this happened. A, this was like yeah. a long time ago. This some guy was figuring this out and like black and white pictures of him standing next to like a big machine and like all this weird like, fucking sci-fi movie shit. But this guy was doing some TED talk and being like, "Yo, this is very promising." And he's like, "Look at this thing. This one experiment we did where we start killing the cell, and you can see like something comes out of the cell." He's like, "This means it's dying." Mm. Imagine you did chemo now. You could use like you could do like half the chemo. You're mm -hmm. gonna be so much better for it as like your your being because chemo we all know is like just to do half murder you and like yeah. hope to murder the, the cancer before you die yeah. essentially. Um, and I'm sure it takes some years off your life or something, but like it's just the juice is worth the squeeze at that point. Yeah. So it's like they're he's like you're you're just you know it's like a smarter technology. It's like it's it's. I don't know what to call it, like just holistic, just like like deeper science and not just this drug kind of pharma mentality where it's like, no, 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 we need to use this. And it's like, hey, like in, in the off chance that we use less of this and you make like a few million or billion less that year, yeah. but like you save a bajillion lives, like I'm, I'm, I'm just being the fucking armchair, like altruist, but like, yeah, come I, on. If I, yeah, I mean, if, it, if you were diagnosed tomorrow, I would form a team. I would go to like the doctors. Thanks, bro. I love how you used me in this scenario. <laughs> me too, bro. I would fucking, I would like find a guy yeah. and make a thing. I'd spend the few thousand dollars I have in my fucking life yeah. making sure that you died comfortably <laughs> and that we shot waves of sound. I, I, would, I would hire monks. But, but like, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. I would do like sweat lodges and shit. And like, there's a lot of natural things you can do for any disease, like saunas and fasting is huge there's like a whole institute in california i think i think it's california and they treat a, they treat a lot of these big illnesses with like really long extended fasting like i'm talking like 20 to 30 day fasts there's a lot of like like dude people are like the when people lose a bunch of weight and yeah. they don't have this the, the skin yeah. like the fat sagging skin there and then their diabetes is just gone that's it it's just gone and so there's not much money in telling people not to eat, so it's not going to be a popular treatment. You know? I mean, the, I think the for these for these facilities because they're they're monitoring you for those thirty days. But I mean, as like a as like an industry, promoting fasting is not necessarily a profitable measure in a consumer based world. No. But there's a lot of fascinating things with fasting, and if you think about it, fascinating. <laughs> fasting is fascinating. But like, if you think about cancer, it's well, what's the primary source for a cell to multiply is, or a cell in general is glucose. Or there are probably a bunch of other things, but glucose is a main energy source. So by like ketogenic diets or like, like carnivore based diets where there's no sugar, you're already creating an environment where it's harder to multiply in these kind of uh, chaotic cells that just can't stop, right? I, um, I don't, I didn't, I don't remember any of the details, mm -hmm. but I think it was, uh, there was something that came out and Ron Patrick covered it and then another thing like some bioengineer thing that I follow on Facebook or some shit and uh, they were talking about how they measured some kind of molecule when you exercise is excreted that has a direct anti-cancer properties oh, yeah. and it's like it's like oh you know like you like you know when you're a kid and you hear about how like everybody kind of has cancer and it's just like a cell that, that is like gets fucked up for some reason yeah, and, and then like a chances. sunlight can ruin it. Exactly, it's like you're just, you're just, the cell just doesn't die. It's just that the programming is wrong and it keeps multiplying, but it's not supposed to. Yeah, it has like it's it's like I don't know. I don't understand. I'm not a fucking doctor. Let's just leave it at that. But like something that's so obvious and so intuitive is as exercise. Exercise is good for you. Mm. Like it's good for like it's like we don't even understand how good for it is. And it's like you were talking about before, I was saying like, I'm out of shape. Mm. And you were like, just call it unhealthy. That's like we're humans, <laughs> we should be moving. But dude, it's a great, it was a great point. Like, I think I kind of fought you on it. Yeah. But, but then I was like, you know what? <clears throat> I like the term out of shape. Cause I, I find it funny that to talk about our, your body. Well, you're talking in shape. the most literal sense of it. Yeah. But it's but never used that way. It's, it's, it has that new speak problem to it where yeah. you're hiding the problem, you're yeah. hiding the thing. And it's like, yeah, I'm unhealthy. And I had that exercise is not a way of life. It's that's like, that's why I had that realization. It's like uh, when we went running or something, and my friend was like, "Fuck, I'm so out of shape," and then I kept running. And I was like, "Wait, out of shape? That doesn't mean anything. It's just I'm fucking unhealthy, and I'm feeling unhealthy, and I'm calling it out of shape." So it's like 
it's like uh, you're, being, you're not pulling punches with yourself. Yeah, no, like call it what one. it is. Yeah, you know, it's like getting to the source of the, the root instead of. I like to say it's like dressing the pig. Like I use that example a lot. It's like, you know, sometimes you beat around the bush or you dress the pig. It's uh, I like sugarcoating. Yeah, it because is. it's like. It's like oh fuck, like and it takes away some of the importance behind it, right? It's like, oh, I'm out of shape. Like, it's just something you can say, and it's acceptable. But yeah. if you say I'm a fucking unhealthy, like I'm dying at a faster pace, like my body's really unhealthy, it's a much more blunt way to put it, and it might actually inspire you more, you know? I think, I think, like, I mean, it's kind of ironic, but I almost want a word, like, kind of like the, like the phrasing that you speak, you know? Like, I kind of want, like, some kind of terminology to let people know that I'm, I want them and I want myself to be held in some kind of standard of like uh, trying to be less subjective when I talk. Mm -hmm. Trying at least, I know it's kind of futile, but it's not, you know, like there, there's, there's power in pulling less punches and just yeah. being direct and being like, I think you're being stupid. Instead of saying you're stupid, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm giving myself the onus. Or instead of calling someone stupid, I'm like, hey, I think you did this wrong. Like there's just ways to be more direct but less mean mm. or sometimes just being mean because that's how you feel but explaining that's how you feel mm. and just owning everything owning everything you know like yeah. I, I, I mean i could i could go i could rant about examples but it's like i, I almost want like I'm, I'm like old speak or true speak or something but something that can't be co-opted where it's like it's just a method of trying to be clear and for the sake of like avoiding confusion and I would call that confusion for someone to be like, oh, I'm out of shape. And I it's would like call this missing something. That's old school important. speak, whatever you're trying to say. I would call it precision. Being a little bit more precise in what you're trying to say. Is she even dreaming? No. Like, more precision with your speech. You know, like, like, like out of shape is not precise in what you're actually feeling or meaning. So saying something like, I'm, I'm unhealthy is a more precise way to put it. You know? Clear speech. I don't know. I almost want a pun or something. I almost want like something clever. Like, uh... Well, you just try to get to the truth. So whether it's clever or not, it just it needs to be more honest. I guess I like when stuff pops. I like words. I like that's why I like poetry. I like when there's a venue and sort of like a forum for like say whatever you want, say it however you want, subvert expectations, use what people think a word is, and so that you can have double meaning mm. or whatever. There's all these words for things like that too. There's like onomatopoeias and malappropriations and. And uh, and like puns and and like it there, there's these are tools that people just kind of ignore and then they don't realize how much vocabulary shapes how we think and and I mean this is more obvious but still people don't realize I don't even realize mm -hmm. and I think about it all the time how much thinking affects how we act yeah so it's like this is again like I said before I always kind of worry about the root of everything I there's this big like chain. And some chains are heavier, some links are bigger than others, so you just kind of tug on, on the heavy chain and all the small chains come with yeah. you. So it's like, that's just how I think. So instead of out of shape, just call it rotting. <laughs> it's like, it's like E-Prime. Remember like the, the Robert Anton Wilson? Robert Anton Wilson? Why is it such a familiar name? That's a, that's a fucking can of worms, but like, um, well, I know that he, talk, he talks about like speaking in a way that is like extremely direct and objective. Yeah. So uh, the example I always give is instead of saying the grass is green, you say I perceive the grass to seem green. So you, you, you're kind of explaining instead of just throwing a word. It's a nice way to do it, but that's exhausting. It's, I mean, it's unrealistic, <laughs> but it's like if you like that, like he's written entire books like this Jeez. in that way of speaking. So it's like you don't even, I don't, I don't know, man. It's like you, you, you can't use the word is mm. essentially. Because nothing is, it's all perceived the way you subjectively experience it. That'd be a good experiment to try for like a month to just talk and think like that. Bruh. It would remove a lot of bullshit, yeah. for sure. Like you wouldn't be able to complain, you wouldn't be able to well, essentialize anyone. Well, people wouldn't want to have you around too often. <laughs> I think you'd be more conservative with your words. If, you're, if your girlfriend asks you if you're, she looks pretty, you'd be like, I perceive you to seem cr pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking asshole! <laughs> It, it might start I'm not an ass you perceive me to, to be an <laughs> asshole. To I be feel like it's a little asshole. bit too. Uh, if you really think about it, if you spoke like that, it would almost come off a little bit condescending. And I, 
I don't know. It, it, it's contextual. It's about a baseline. Someone might see, like, you know, look, people speak different ways. Like, even just in, like, these microcultures, like, from friend group to friend group. Mm -hmm. So then you go to, like, another English-speaking country, and they have, like, completely different ways of thinking and seeing things and speaking and different slang. And it affects how they think. Mm -hmm. But you're like, but you speak English. Like, we should be able to blah, 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 you know? And it's not like that. Yeah. So if you suddenly sound condescending, someone being like, hey, fuck you, you're being condescending, that's, like, the, that's like more appropriate. Yeah. But if someone doesn't fucking know who you are, or, or suddenly that's you true. change, but you are consistently that way, yeah. that's the baseline now. If they think you're condescending, that's fucking their problem. Mm. You're not being condescending. Intention is important. And that's not a debate anymore. People, I think, are understanding that. Whether you like Jordan Peterson or not, you know, mm. like, people are, are coming out being like, hey, man, like, you know, if I accidentally stab you, that's different than if I intentionally stab you. Yeah. Like, in a court of law. So, intention is not everything. You still stabbed somebody. Yeah. <laughs> but it's important. Because so you might go yeah. out and stab somebody again. Yeah. Either by accident or by intention. Like, you need to be corrected. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Good point. Fuck, bro. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, what would you... How would you say... Like I don't know, rotting or unhealthy. Like you, like you're, you're, you're enacting bad habits that lead to. I would, I'm still sticking with unhealthy. It's it definitely yeah. is harsher. Yeah. And blunter. If someone's like, oh, I'm out of shape, no, you're just unhealthy, and you could change that. What other examples are there like that? Hmm. Like oh, I think like like I think love and like intelligent are big words as well. There's a lot of things where we like de deviate from what we're actually trying to say, and yeah. we oversimplify. Those are easy targets, bro. Yeah. Hate also. It's like, oh, I hate that. Yeah, I mean, well, let's let's uh, uncover. Let's go a little bit deeper in what you're trying to actually say. So a lot of blanket terms are used for a lot of things that don't really give precise meaning behind it. Yeah. And usually, it's like a, I remember we had Phil on. He was like, ask yourself the five whys. And like you get closer to an answer, you know, you can do it for any. It's like a thought experiment. You can do it for anything. Oh, oh like the layer of why? Yeah, like okay. oh, dude. Like I, I, I still do that as a kid or something. <laughs> it was drugs before drugs, man. Yeah, yeah. It's a good way to, to to get deeper into an understanding of something. You know, it's like I'm out of shape could be your first why, and then you go why, and then you're like I haven't been training. Okay, why? And then uh, I've just been feeling down and depressed. Okay, why? You know, and then that's that's already three layers deep. And you have another two after that. And you're getting already into like, <laughs> you know, the psychology of it. Yeah, like I like that experiment because it's it's forcing con uh, uh, you're confronting truth. You know, tr you're true. If you're being honest in the experiment, you can bullshit yourself, like just bullshit yourself. But if you're being honest in those five whys, you get a lot of shit done. Yeah, it's silly to. It's I feel kind of I feel stupid in this realization, but it's like so obvious, like. Mm. I just thought it was clever and I enjoyed it because other people were like, stop it, you know, stop asking why. It's a, it's a, it's a good thing to why? know, like to know things, to ask why. Stop asking why. Why? But, but what you just did, and it just kind of clicked for me, is that you're literally making a connection. You're like, you're like revealing the reason why you're acting a certain way. And it's a connection to why you're acting that way. Mm -hmm. So you can solve something and then suddenly find it easier or suddenly begin to do the better habit yeah. because you fix something over here exactly over there suddenly gets like like tweaked or or whatever whatever and it's, it's like a tensegrity of of, uh, of ideas that are all affecting each other so you're just going through those layers and then you'll notice the tension point it's yeah like you it might not be intuitive to be like well, okay why am i acting this way because i'm feeling this way okay why am i feeling this way because this happened okay mm -hmm. why did this happen well i mean you know it happened because of this but like then maybe the why gets like useless it's mm -hmm. like why did this happen okay what why am i thinking about this this way you have to kind of like re reposition yourself yeah. and then the way you think might be based on some core belief or something in your life that you can change or something that does need to be addressed even though it's difficult and then you just focus on that mm -hmm. and then like this like you know you know that those videos where they put the, all the bricks at an angle and then the guy clicks the last brick, and if they all go, yeah, yeah. Like, like that's that. what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's set up that way, and then you just kind of like 
flatten one thing and then everything else lines up. Yeah. And I'm, I I have proof of this now. That's what's cool. That's why I'm getting excited. It's like, this is so obvious. It's like, that's the reason you ask or why. But yeah. it's like, I've been looking at these, let's say, more fundamental or, or, or and by nature kind of like hidden or, or shadowy things of myself. Mm. And it just helps everything. Absolutely. It's, um, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's looking at places you're ignoring or whatever, forever, whatever reason, whether it's fear or just, you know, whatever it's just when you start to reveal you heal and that's really what happens yeah i think because it 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 uh it calls for acceptance to be able to just understand yourself see what's going on and then to even work with it all of that requires acceptance and and not like some and kind of and it's not in like a consistently novel way you yeah. just have to keep going back to this fundamental like oh that's who i am oh okay what about this oh because of that's who i am it always kind of reinforces this like similar thing and you're kind of brushing the dust off this whole revelation all the yeah. time and acceptance is such a cool practice and you just feel better and better yeah. you just you just like start acting in your benefit and for the and i mean maybe not for the benefit of others like we don't have to put that on people but like it kind of happens like i was talking to a friend today about how i've been feeling better and doing better and because of different types of therapy and mm. and uh, <clears throat> microdosing psilocybin and just all the things I'm throwing at myself and that acceptance thing is a huge part of it which is why I'm, I'm talking about it now yeah, I have like yeah. a fucking acceptance boner lately but one thing I pointed out to her and to myself was that like a good like a, the, the sign that I'm on the right track is that I've seen it seems like people around me are happier too mm. and it's like oh damn like, well that's it it's like your vibration is rising and yeah. it might not even be that they're happier it's just that that's the frequency that they're connecting with you at. Yeah, like I, I can hold space better yeah. or or I'm not a burden on them. There's so many factors. Like you're you're, to, you're spot on, man. Like yeah. I, it's, it's a but it's, it's like, a vibe. Yeah, it's exactly. A vibe. And you're ringing that bell. And they may not even be at that frequency, but now that your frequency is there, that's the frequency you're connecting to. It's like um, when you're in a real down state, you can call somebody and just start complaining. And then they're complaining. It's like you're sharing that frequency. Sure. And, and it could be weeks later they call yeah. you and be like this is the guy that complained that yeah. we, compl we complained to each other yeah yeah dude it's crazy and, and it also but uh, that's why as a tribe when you raise your vibration and you you start to elevate and feel better and whatever it's infectious you know it starts to raise other vibrations but you i mean you can lose people because yeah. they, well, that's they can't fall that's yeah. I, I was i was going to say something similar like there there's in, I look at the I look at how I'm acting now, and in retrospect, like how much of a downer I was, mm. I suddenly have a like an understanding of the people who couldn't stand it anymore, mm. and I have such a like a appreciation for the people who could. Mm. So it's like both sides suddenly I have this like expanded, yeah, yeah. Uh, like um, I have like more love to dole out almost just because of a different way of seeing. Yeah, it's really cool. It's wild. That, that's how did you achieve that? It was through all your practice. Because <laughs> I'm finding now, I've noticed my vibe is raising based on my, a lot of for me, it's been about physical health. Like I eating. think that's the next frontier for me. Uh, I think I let myself go and like that's the next. Uh, and it's now, so obvious. as I'm exercising, I'm realizing there's layers of resistance that's stored in the body. So it's like, as I'm working in different areas now, I am uncovering emotions that I kind of pushed into there. It's really interesting. Like I worked my legs today. We, we did stairs this morning, me and Simon. And as we were running the stairs, like there, there's there's like layers of emotion that are stored in my legs that they're bringing up thoughts, you know? And then if you work your upper body, there's layers of like emotional stress that were stored in the upper body. So it's like you're pulling away these layers of, of pain and uh, traumas that are just getting stored in the fascia of that area. This is why I love yoga. Like, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, not, that's my next thing. I gotta create some yin yoga again and start stretching. That's what I need because, yeah. I, like, I love like like the Edo portal, like intuitive, like I don't even I, like yoga. Obviously, means a lot of things to a lot of people now, but I really mean like just being in tune with my mm -hmm. body in some kind of practice or some kind of session. And like this morning, I, I was in the shower. I took a cold shower. Also, I'm proud of myself. I, I do it at nighttime, but I'm gonna start trying to do it in the morning. I like it. It's like a. Uh, it's like I don't. I can skip the coffee if I do that. Oh man, there's no coffee needed after that. Yeah, for sure. But um, I realized like you can skip 
like these emotional releases by trying to s skip steps physically as well. Mm -hmm. And like, I'll, like I want to stretch and like move out, or like uh, like decompress my back because I'm sitting all the time, and like I want like it helps me sleep and all these things. But like, I'm I'm thinking that like like imagine the difference between like using the so right, you know, like this big plastic like fucking u-shaped thing that just stabs you in the gut and mm -hmm. tries to like really release your psoas but like my psoas has been tight for various reasons mm -hmm. um and all all i did in the shower i just remembered like the the what do they call it like the like the power pose like the kind of superhero yeah. like wonder woman superman like hands on your hips hands on yeah, yeah so like like i i kind of like lock my knees which usually is not good, but like it, it's 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 really to stretch my my core, mm. and in ways that I'm I'm not used to because I'm always like hunching, and I'm not I'm not like fucking ego or like I'm exaggerating yeah, like yeah. to show people, but like to be actually standing upright and to be taking deep breaths in that shape mm. to be kind of reprogramming my my body to move, so to speak, in that nice. expanded form. Dude, I felt a crazy stretch. Yeah in my psoas and I'm like oh and then and it's like my breath is opening up and it's like I feel like a laugh cry coming on sort of and it reminded me of breath work and I'm like fuck man like I'm skipping steps yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like this it's it's revelatory to just be like it's like we need all these tricks you know like I need I need the superman I need the power pose I need all these names instead of just kind of being in the space and just kind I'm of going moving. with feeling man you know yeah. like it's, uh, a, it's a it's a skill yeah or it's just it's just a it's a wisdom you know it's starting to listen to your body more without the names and the labels oh, i gotta do this pose for this and just like i used to carl is a great yoga teacher i want to get him out on this podcast but like he would do like a pose and be like okay like do the warrior two pose let's say and now just explore here dance around a little bit move your arms in weird ways find uh different angles that work for you like there's a structure of the pose that you're supposed to do but let's see if you need to modify it to your anatomy, to your emotional state. And then all of a sudden your eyes are closed and you're just like, you, your warrior pose looks like shit, but you're feeling such a deep stretch because that's what your body is telling you it needs, you know? And I noticed recently, man, I've been dancing a lot lately. Just fucking- I actually stopped. I'm glad that you stopped. Get back in it, bro. It's so, it's so incredible. And it's not even to work out. It's just to fucking flow and just move your arms. And I'm doing some weird fucking, I don't even know what I'm doing, and it looks ridiculous, but it's just you feel it. And uh, yesterday night, I, or was it yesterday? Yesterday night, yeah, I was in this, the cold shower, and I just something took over me because I was doing the sauna, and then the cold shower, and then back to the sauna. But something took over me, and I was just like making like energy balls with my hands, and I was in such a trance. It's like Tai Chi type of. Yeah, and it was like no thought. It was just movement, 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 and fuck. It's so it. hard to get there and stay there for me. It's easier when you're in a in a tough environment like a cold shower because you have to tune them up. Yeah. You know, try it in the cold shower. Just start fucking. I always move around in the cold shower. Yeah, I can't. I can't just sit to. there. Okay, yeah. move. Why do you sitting there and moving is the same thing? You're in it. I can, I just it's it's. I mean, I like ever since we spoke to to Pat Owen, like I yeah. I, I consciously try to relax as fast as possible, mm. and I feel like that gets me there faster. Whatever whatever there is for me. But uh, I'm always like turning, like yeah. a like a rotisserie. Like it's too cold at first, and I just kind of let myself acclimate. Just move in there. I just I, I mean it's it's neither here nor there, but it's just the fact that I I I want to trick myself into enjoying it mm. so that I do it tomorrow, because if it's really uncomfortable, that stains my brain for like weeks, for like three weeks sometimes, and it's like I have to force myself and I just extend or grow that stain. Make a dance party of it. Dance party. <laughs> Alright, let's 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 go close this episode. Wrap it up. Wrap it in. So if anything you guys take from this is live your life on your terms and as if you knew your No, actually we don't know our time when we're gonna die. So fucking live like you do. And live to every day it's like the last. Live, dance, and uh suck dick for coke. <laughs> Rest in peace, Bob Saget. Rest in peace, Bob Saget. Peace. Mm -hmm.